there's a bunch of videos online of medical experts and doctors telling you what being dope sick feels like, going through heroin withdrawal. That's great but they've never been through it. They can list off symptoms, but it's not the same. This video, I am going to give you the honest, raw truth on what is actually going through the mind of an addict and how it feels during dope sickness. Dope sickness typically refers to coming off heroin, coming off oxy, any opioid, Vicodin, Percocet, Dilaud, and Fentanyl, whatever. Some people use it when talking about other drugs, but that's usually what it's referring to, coming off heroin. If you're taking any of those other things in large amounts, you will have dope sickness. Somewhere between four to eight hours after your last hit, one of those symptoms is gonna creep up. Some people it's runny nose, some people it's yawn, some people it's getting cold. For me, it was nose, runny nose, and I, it would get worse and worse. So I'd blow my nose every 10 minutes and then every three minutes and then every minute. Also, it was the yawns. Start yawning. <sighs> then they'd get worse. Then they'd come every couple minutes and each one, these are not normal yawns. These are those I've been up for four days, can't sleep, and know that I gotta go do something and still can't get any more sleep. Ugh, they hurt, they come more, they hurt your whole body, and you know with each one, it's just gonna get longer and deeper and worse. For me, that was when I knew, boom, this is starting and this is gonna get worse. At that same time, when that first symptom, whatever it is, for me, those yawns started coming, the mental panic and anguish begins to turn into this race. If I'm still in active addiction, and the reason I'm going through withdrawal is I just can't find something, then that race of I need to get something because if I wait five hours, this is all gonna be so much worse begins that, oh my God, I gotta get this. If, if I'm going through withdrawal, like, all right, I'm done, I'm gonna quit, then that is when the mental psychosis of this side of my brain telling me, get that, get that substance, you need it. We've been doing this, we can't function without it. It's like your car saying, I need some gas to run here. And then this side of your brain saying, no, you got to get clean. You got to stay off it. You just get through it, grind through it. That anguish begins and comes and comes and just, pfft, it's full blown. Easiest way to describe this. Imagine you get dropped off on the top of Mount Everest. You have no gear. You've never done it before. There's a storm coming on the horizon. You're already freezing cold and you have no help. Your only two options are begin going down, which you know this is gonna be the most miserable, brutal journey ever, or stay there and die. That anguish begins. Your brain is telling you the journey ahead of you is going to be so painful and miserable and basically impossible, especially if you've tried before and failed a couple times, you're already in the sense of failure that sense of impending doom is crushing. The only way you can get out of this is either get through it, die, or use. It begins to just destroy and oh, is it miserable. That is, you don't know what to do. You're restless. Do I use and start it over again? Do I just go through it? What can I do? What makes it better? And there's really nothing but time. Yeah, there's some medications now that can help, but time. Hour 10 to 20, that panic and anxiety is steadily rising along with your blood pressure, heart rate, those symptoms. You are so restless and irritable and nervous and drained. And, and it's not just 
sickness. It is so much deeper than that. It's the sense I'm trying to explain here to people who've never been through it. Day one, 24 full hours after your last use, whatever symptoms hit you are going to be in full effect. These are going to just be nailing you so much. If you get value out of Sober Dogs videos, leave us a comment, hit that like, hit that subscribe. Yeah. The reason I say whatever symptoms hit you is like the flu or whatever, it can be different. For me, it was runny nose, cramps, hot and cold sweats, restless leg, whole restless body, just nausea, that. For a good friend I have, it was a lot of vomiting, diarrhea. I didn't get that, but that's what they got. Now, the symptoms physical might be a little bit different person to person, but the one common theme is that emotional, spiritual, physical, and mental draining. Every part of the body, including your thoughts, is in this crisis, depression, drained mode of just uh, dead down like a computer got nailed with the virus. The car just got totaled. Everything is crushed, destroyed, not working. This is when you want to die. Literally, you want to die. If there is that lever you could pull, take me now, we want to pull it just to get out of that feeling, that pain. Heroin withdrawal, opioid withdrawal is rarely, if ever, fatal, but you feel like you're going to die. During that dope sickness, every task looks impossibly hard. You know in the movie scene when somebody's, you know, seven feet away from something they're trying to grab and the movie pans out and it's like, you know, it looks like it's a hundred feet away? That is everything. I would be sitting on my bed for six hours straight with the worst dry mouth ever saying, I got to get water, I got to get water. I tell myself that, I turn my head, see how far it is, and ugh, roll over, maybe not out for a minute or two, then be up for 10 minutes debating the water, finally get up after hours. After two or three steps, I would have to take a break. Physically, mentally, it's draining. That sink that is 20 feet away looks like it is two miles away through you know, broken glass I gotta crawl. Drop, take a break, drop, take a break. Finally get to the sink to drink the water. I'm not just, you know, drinking my cup of water. I gotta lean on the sink. <sighs> take a break after each sip. Multiple times I would drop right there on the kitchen floor after taking a sip, take an hour break until I took the journey back to the bed. This continues for three to seven, two to seven days, depending, you know, per person, how much they've been using, all that. But what really separates dope sickness apart from, you know, being sick, like a lot of people compare it to the flu. The symptoms can be similar to the flu, but what really makes it different, okay, let's say you had to take off a couple days from work, three days from work for the flu. When you get back, you're going to have some extra emails, some extra things to do, some more pressure. Maybe you got to show up a little bit early, stay a little bit late. The next week, you might have some extra anxiety and pressure to get caught up. Now imagine the same situation you take off three, four days for dope sickness. During those three, four days, and this all has been happening and culminates at that period when you finally are thinking for a, little, for a couple seconds, your bank account was emptied out totally. You got fired. Every member of your family is pissed off at you and disappointed. Your girlfriend or boyfriend, if they haven't left already, is on the verge of leaving. You owe everybody and their mother money. You got stores, banks, the IRS all coming at you for money you owe them. Your car has no gas and needs you know, thousands of dollars of repairs to run. Insurance, healthcare, license, all that stuff is either out of date or non-existent. And parole, probation, or the police are looking for you. Imagine 
all that anxiety and pressure culminated on top of this sickness, you're worried about getting through it, but part of you does not even want to get through it because of all that stuff. Anything and everything that can be going wrong is going wrong in your life. And even getting through the sickness is like, okay, I beat one mountain, now I got 10 times of a bigger mountain to climb. It can be exhausting and overwhelming. And that is what really separates it. To add insult onto injury, the final thing that really separates dope sickness is the grieving. You are grieving this substance. Grieving it like the loss of a loved one. Literally. We used this substance five, six times a day, every day for years. We used it before we ate, when we woke up, before work, during work, after work, before dinner, before hanging out with our girlfriend, before bed, before shower. It becomes ingrained in every part of our life. Also ingrained in every part of our body. Our bodies get used to it. All of a sudden, we're taking that out. It is like losing a piece of your body. It is like coping without an arm, coping with the loss of a loved one. This thing that has been a part of your life all day, every day for years is now gone or supposed to be gone. You grieve it. You are, what am I going to do? How do I survive without it? How do I live without it? It is a grieving level and pain that is insane, truly insane. That is the raw truth about dope sickness, about what is physically going or mentally going on. It is a level of anguish unparalleled. The good part is thousands and millions of people have gotten through it. And if you got to deal with it, you can too. You can get through it. All right. K Rugs, the sober dog, I'm out. If you want all of the, the analytical list of symptoms, check out this video on what heroin withdrawal is like. I'm out. Love you guys. See ya.